Hey guys, my name is Joey Shanks, and I'm here to show you guys how I created my own version of the black hole from Interstellar using all in-camera elements, where I would then bring them into After Effects, do some compositing, throw in some Red Giant universe filters to create a very similar but unique looking rendition of the black hole. Now, I put out a video about a week ago for my web series, Shanks FX, which is produced by PBS Digital Studios, and that was a very quick and simple video of the process of me creating this black hole. And it's really fun to watch, but if you're really trying to learn how the process really works, you're not gonna get the amount of information you need to, to kind of realize how you're gonna achieve this in creating this. So what this video is gonna kind of entail is me kind of almost like a director's commentary of this video I made for my web series where we're gonna open up the footage, open up some After Effects comps, really break things down. How I then manipulated in post-production to eventually create what you see on your left here, which is the black hole uh, that I created from scratch. Everything you see was captured in camera. It was then manipulated in post, but everything you see came from all in-camera elements. So we have our computers here and we're going to dive right into it and just go through the process, open up comps, and just really break this thing down step by step, element by element, and so you guys can get a better understanding of, of how I achieved uh, to create that black hole. So let's do it. Okay, so this first shot that you see here of this black hole is something that I created with this really cool substance called magnetic putty. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's a really strong spherical magnet and this putty here has silver properties in it and it doesn't really suck in the magnet. It's actually the magnet is sucking the putty around it. And what I did was angled it here and then I just did some color correction on it and I thought it turned out to look like a pretty good version of a black hole. This is uh, an episode we shot about a year and a half ago, probably our most popular one. It was a Vimeo staff pick. It's got like 800,000 views on Vimeo and then like 300,000 on YouTube. That's another cool shot of it too. That is just to show you guys how that effect was created, even though it doesn't really pertain to what we're doing here, but that's the opening shot. So I at least figure, try to explain everything to you guys. As you can see, uh, the most accurate simulation ever of what a black hole would look like. And there's this really great featurette on Interstellar and how they created the mathematical equations and for formulas for the black hole. Astrophysicist Kip Thorne wrote equations and formulas on what a black hole would look like if we were ever to see one. And technically, this is the most accurate one that, that's ever been seen for a major Hollywood movie. From the film, Boom. So that's what it looks like. And if you've seen the film yet, it's really impressive and it looks incredible on a, a huge IMAX screen. And it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. That is what we came up with. Done all in camera. And like I said, we just uh, manipulated the in-camera elements in post with After Effects. And those red giant filters really, you'll see at the very end, really kind of just was the cherry on top that really helped sell everything. And you'll also see a quick, this is like a fast forward quick breakdown of like all the elements into like two seconds, but we're gonna be going over tons of those elements. I knew I wanted to do this episode and I was starting to plan to do it. And then I think the next day after, you know, one day of prep, they released that featurette. So this was the only image I had of the black hole. So with this featurette, I was able to get this guy here, this guy, this guy, this one, this one, this one. And I love that spaceship, the Endurance. So I printed that off just for fun. But it, it gave me a lot more reference stills and images and video footage to get started from. And that was a big help. Great quote by Christopher Nolan, however sophisticated your CGI is, if it's been created from no physical elements and you haven't shot anything with the camera, it's gonna stick out. And 
I really do find that true, especially if you're trying to create visual effects that are supposed to look very vivid and, and lifelike, where you're not creating a, a hyper-realistic environment, you're not making it look cartoony or comic book style, you know, where it's really saturated colors. And Christopher Nolan's films really are, are very real to life. And uh, I think that's what he meant by that quote. And I think it's just a good practice to, to try to capture what you can in camera because then you have real references to match your digital lighting and your all your digital elements, I think just will match up better. For those of you who don't shoot in camera, maybe uh, seeing the process of what I'm doing here might inspire you guys to at least consider it. So I even created my own little base model of the black hole. And I used light painting elements for this where I traced it and I used some of that stuff, but this was really more of just me to get an idea of the scale of it. And it helps me. You just have a better idea of, of what you're trying to create. These are like Hot Wheel racetracks here with this crazy planet I made for one of my past films. Okay, so now we're gonna start getting into capturing our elements. I like to use Dragon Frame software, which is usually made for stop motion animation. Opening up this program allows me, when I take the picture, I can view it. Like this was the first picture I took that day. And I can really zoom in, check it out. Because sometimes you can't really tell if the image is gonna work or not when you're seeing it just through that little screen. This software, you can download a free trial and it works just the same as the regular version. The only thing is you can only do up to 50 frames for each take and then you have to start a new take. So for what I'm using it for, the Dembo version will work just as good. And the first thing we're going to capture is the thin inner ring that makes up the black hole. I used a styrofoam plant that I'd had lying around from a past film and I lined up a, a can light, a circular can light, about three to four feet away where I wanted to create a nice thin rim light around the planet and use for the center core of the black hole. I think this is the one we went with and we took that into After Effects. We used this section and we duplicated it. Looking at the reference of the one from Interstellar, it was a very crisp thin inner circle and uh, this crescent moon area right here wouldn't match what we were going for. So you can see that, that, that's a pretty thin inner ring here. Made a mask and I masked out this area, duplicated it, rotate, and set the blending mode to add. Then I would take another element and duplicate it and then put it around there till I got this right here. And you can see there's some edges here and uh but that that's okay. I kind of that that randomness of of these kind of little uh particles and these little light elements are okay. So, our core center element is is good to go. So, we're going to select all and we're going to pre-compose it. We're going to call it our core center. Okay. And the first thing really what you want to do is, is create your atmosphere. The atmosphere, I, I wanted to use an orb, shine a light through it, because I knew I was going to kind of mat it out with our thin, where is that at? Our thin ring element, we we're going to mat it on top of that. So we just need this nice natural glow around it. So I got my fog machine out, and I, I filled the room up with fog took some more shots and let's see which one was the winner. Now you see these are a little softer, but you could definitely see that haze there. A little too much. And I think this was the winner right here. So you got some really nice atmospheric feel to it. You can see the door. Um, I'm not sure if you guys, a little bit right here, but we're gonna throw some blurs on that and blur that out. And you can even see the stand right here, but we would, we're gonna go ahead and blur this out. But this is really the central piece, this atmospheric background element 
of the whole black hole. And it, it really instantly comes together if you can get a nice atmospheric background plate. It, everything else just kind of falls into line, and I'm going to show you guys how. So uh, we captured this one, and let's, let's see my settings real quick, just so we can see what it was uh, taken at. So I was at f22, and it was a four-second exposure. And I had a, a neutral density filter on uh, my Tokina, or my Canon wide-angle lens, and I was at 17 millimeter. Now I did a, a few different passes. I did one, one with more of a, a cooler feel, more blue. And this is good to keep around if you wanted to do some color correcting after the fact, you could do uh, apply like an adjustment filter, a blending mode on it, where uh, it, this would then add some blue to uh, your shot if you wanted to, to try to change the hue a little bit without using a actual color filter if you wanted to keep it pure like we have been doing. We got that here. So what we're going to do is bring in our composition we just made, make a mask of it, an ellipse, and all right, that looks pretty good. Now we'll unsolo it, and we're just going to scale this guy down and try to position it. So we want it just to be covering pretty much the whole sphere that is that is illuminated. And let's feather it. Maybe uh, subtract the mask a little, and let's just fine tune it. So that is our black hole, and we'll turn it on. And that looks pretty good. Now what we have here is, as you can see, uh, this table here, the stand. So what we're going to have to do is our atmosphere. So let's name it first. Atmosphere blur. We're just going to use like a fast blur on it. Let's feather it. There we go. And you see our door over here. Kind of see a little bit there. So let's make another filter and that should be blur, blurred as well. And there we go. So we're starting to get somewhere. Now it just looks like there's this big black ball out in an environment that's not in my shed. And like even all these little particles and stuff like that, that's just stuff you can't simulate. Uh, well, you can simulate it, but the, the unpredictable stuff of shooting in camera it creates all these little speckles of goodness that I think just really work. There's something from the shed. I don't know what it is. But um, I, I like all of this, these little artifacts and particles. And there's some banding going on here, but we're going to fix that later with some, with some filters. So those are our two elements, uh, our inner ring and then our atmosphere combined into one. So we're going to pre-compose this, and we're going to move on to creating our outer ring elements of our black hole. Now this section right here with the moon and the steel wool with the fan creating uh, these circular light streaks, I kind of messed with the order a little bit because I, I thought this segment was kind of interesting and visually striking, so I kind of moved it in front of some elements that would normally go first. So these elements really go towards the end where they are going to layer underneath our almost finished composite to add a nice glow element to it. So really and truly what we would do next is create our circular ring elements and that's what we're going to do. I started playing around with long exposures and shooting a flashlight at reflective items like a disco ball or prisms, glass orbs that I have, even those, those glass spheres that I was using. Uh, I would uh, shine it at that so it's not a direct beam at the camera, but it created really interesting light streaks that I would then use later to create the ring elements. Uh, turn it into a 3D layer, I could manipulate it, turn the axis so it, it's more elongated and uh, skew it a little bit. And uh, that, that kind of stuff worked out great. I really didn't anticipate it to get my ring elements using long exposure techniques. Like it's not very soft right here, but it's softer here. So I would go in After Effects, crop this part and, and use these elements, which are just worked really well. 
you didn't you can morph them and you wouldn't know that you were kind of degrading the quality of it. It 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 all worked. You could do really whatever you wanted with these images. This one was actually with that model, black hole model I made. So you can kind of definitely see the curvature here. And I think I used that one. And even if you know you can see other things in the shot, like you just crop this out and no one will ever know. And I tried it with you know different lights, just see what would happen, different colored lights. I think that was a laser onto like a hula hoop or something. That's one of those uh, lights that spin when you push a button. Really cool effect, but doesn't really work for what we're going for. The edges are too crisp. It's not soft enough. Take a look at the center ring element here. Looks to be about 19 separate images used, bits and pieces. Really just minute ones all put together to create this ring. The one in Interstellar isn't as round, and this was not actually a choice I made, so ours would be a little bit different and have its own look and feel. Even kind of the, this, these kind of dust kind of elements where it looks kind of like particles, uh, even really kind of matched well of the Interstellar image here. Our top ring here. A lot of softer elements. It looks like this one had 12 different images used. So it doesn't really look like much. It almost looks kind of like hair. But when we composite it all together, add in our center ring, our center core, our atmosphere, it doesn't really come to life until you really add that, that backdrop. Now we're going to incorporate our top and bottom rings. And this is an image of the black hole they came up with without any effects put onto it. This is kind of the render without any filters on it. Let me, let me load the one with the filters. So that's with filters. You can still see the lines, but you kind of, you know, you don't notice the detail as much. Okay, so like I said, see these lines here? And then I noticed that these kind of look similar to those. So I snapped off a few more. I got a pretty, that's a pretty good one. I was going to use these and I wish, I wish the lines were a little more symmetrical, but these elements look very similar to these like that. That's nice. Yeah, there we go. You see, looks pretty similar. Yeah, that's very nice. And that's just the, the inner kind of snoot of the can light I was, I was using. Let's go into After Effects and show you how I piece this, these elements into a composition. And I noticed that the top part is wider because it's coming off and going outwards. And the bottom ring is going towards this thin center core. And the top rings here may, is made up of three different elements. Now, I didn't even touch this photo. That's, you can see the planet there. So I just scaled it down a little bit. That was the normal size and I scaled it down uh, and I rotated it. We added a secondary one where I distorted it a little bit. It needed to be wider. So I just kind of pulled it out a little bit until it kind of matched up nicely with the lower ring element. And now we needed to create this bottom element, which needed to be skinnier. So we had them touching here and it really is similar to what the interstellar black hole was for the consistency of the rings. Uh, I think it worked well. So we can break down what we've got so far. All right, so first we get, got our center core right there. And also I added this extra little streak here because if you see in the, the image here, this bottom ring here actually ends up going out towards the, the, the very thin center ring. I just masked two different elements here as kind of a bridge to connect that lower ring to the center core. Then we made our atmospheric plate. We then made our center ring element with our light streaks. And we also added a little bit of extra atmosphere with, believe it or not, blurred out exposures of light hitting my arms by accident. 
And then we added our secondary rings on the top and our secondary rings on the bottom. And it's starting to come together. I think we need a few more elements here. I think we need to add some stars and add some additional cosmic elements. So let's go through that process. And we're getting, we're getting close here though. Okay, so how I created my cosmic elements and my star fields where I squirt liquids onto a plate of glass. Now I can go on and on and talk about how to achieve this shot, but I'm gonna try to just keep it simple, maybe give you guys a few pointers so you guys can just experiment and try it out for yourselves because that's the only way you're really gonna learn. This is a, a piece of glass. I used some basic light stands with some super clamps. No one ever knows this, this cosmic background I composited into the shot. Your eyes kind of train directly towards the glass and no one ever notices that. And it's one of my favorite composites I've ever done. And you're going to want a, a very directional main source light that you're going to angle just right eye level with the glass where it's just going to skim right across the top. And you'll even be able to see all the little dust particles being illuminated on the glass. And those dust particles are actually going to look like stars, hopefully. I'm hitting that surface and you can kind of see the little dust particles. Now a C-stand or, or some sort of tripod that you can go straight over your subject and look directly down. And you're going to want sandbags if you do have a C-stand because you don't want your camera tipping over. I find that just having an extra light source brings out a lot of the shadows from all the other little elements on the glass. It's good to have a few extra lights here and there because you just got to kind of go with the rhythm and feel it out and just work your lights around and find a good spot because I can never predict what I'm actually going to create. And I get my assortments of liquids there. As you can see, I'm starting to squirt liquids on to the glass surface. And it's a lot of condensed milk with a little bit of food coloring. You're gonna to wanna to hit it every now and then with hydrogen peroxide. And it's going to create kind of a reaction where it's gonna push a lot of the liquids apart from each other. And it's gonna be so minor and so minute that you might not even be able to tell by looking at it. What I do is I do time-lapse photography where I have an intervalometer. I have it set where it takes like a picture every second. I shoot some hydrogen peroxide and I kind of see the reaction happening. And then I kind of just walk away for five, 10 minutes and I come back and then I import the footage. And like this is probably over 10 minutes, this reaction right here. And just be careful about mixing, you know, alcohol and don't be bringing bleach in, making mustard gas or anything like that. So simple water-based stuff works just fine. And this is kind of how I created a lot of the, the star elements for our star field plate. I would mask out the stars. So what I would do was pretty much just make a spherical mask around the stars to get rid of all of this liquid here. And that would be a portion of the star field. This is another still I used where I cropped this out. And I used all of these elements here for the stars. I probably should have wiped this off right here. And I even think you can see this in the finished composite. Like I said, I kind of like the imperfections and they also twinkle too. And that's a key thing. You gotta have some twinkle in them and it's a natural twinkle, believe it or not. I haven't even done much like color correction with these. Let's do some looks on it. So you can really take away colors. You change the whole look around with all these different color settings if you wanted to. It does get a little messy though, but that's practical effects for you. We have our composite here. And I, there's three different elements going on. This green top area, that's one cosmic element. There's a star backdrop I made right here. And then there's another one right here as the black hole is kind of sucking in these little star particles. Like you see this one thing coming like... Just stuff like that. It looks like it's like a little mini... Like it's a super wide shot and that's like the endurance from Instellar like going right at it. It's crazy. In a nutshell, that's how I kind of created the star fields. And I also am teaching a course on how I created this. It's gonna be like a two, three hour course with the Stan Winston School. It's gonna be a live web course. It's gonna be happening in January sometime. So if you wanna know more about this, check out the Stan Winston School. There should be a trailer coming up soon.
Okay, so we're in After Effects now, and this is what it looks like with all of our elements put together. No filters yet, just all of the elements. All in all, there it looks like there's 13 different layers, and I pre-composed them, then exported them, so it would be a little quicker. We're gonna go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. So we're gonna apply three different universe filters on this. We're gonna use the universe hollow matrix filter, which is really good for creating like hologram distortion lines and, and stuff like that, but we're gonna actually just use kind of the glow element of it. See, see what I mean when you, <laughs> we don't need it to look like that, but that looks kind of cool actually. Make our effect scale one, oh, 14 or so, and make sure the frame rate is 24. It's just a good practice to match whatever your frame rate is for your comp. And we're gonna blend this with the original 70% because we don't need too, too much. All right, so we got that going there. And we're gonna open up our effects here and we're gonna uncheck a lot of things. We're gonna uncheck everything but our color and brightness settings. And now let's just turn this off and on real quick. So it adds a nice, really nice glow to it. And that really helps sell the effect. Just that one little filter there. And we could even throw kind of like a wiggle option for the exposure or brightness. So it has kind of a, a pulsating look and feel to it if we wanted to. But for right now, that, that, that's pretty good. So we're gonna add another universe filter. We're gonna use the carousel. And these are really cool. We're kind of using just the certain elements of these filters, which is why these filters are so great because you, you have a lot of options on, on choosing a look that's right for you. We're going to use the strawberry lemonade preset. No frame on it, so it's gonna apply it to the entire image. And let's set the vignette amount to 22. And what I did for my color, and I brought the color down a lot actually, we're just trying to pull a few of these elements into our comp. No green, and then we're gonna have our contrast, bump up our contrast a little bit. And our fading down to zero. Turn this off. So that just adds a little bit more atmosphere to the shot. Now we're gonna to go to our light leak and we're gonna make this light style edge large. And I brought it the opacity down a little bit. Flicker strength 50. So yeah, this is gonna add a little bit of some edge elements where you feel maybe like there's another sun or there's some kind of solar flares that are coming, like hitting the edge of the camera. Just adds a little bit more life and energy to it. So let's change this, the color to match more of our orange in the shot. So that's just with the carousel and that's with the hollow matrix. Okay, and then we're gonna use one more universe filter. We're gonna use the masked blur filter and the universe blur. I'll change a few settings here. We're gonna change this to 25 the blur size. Let's bring the radius down a little bit. Now you can see that really takes a lot of that orange out of, out of the shot. We don't want all of that orange lost. So what we're gonna do with our adjustment layer here is we're gonna change the blending mode to screen. And there that brings, brings our orange back but it doesn't make it too overwhelming. So I think that, I think all three really do a good job in helping enhance the shot. So hollow matrix, carousel, mass blur. And then we're gonna add that, we're gonna add a little bit of a blue solid on top and we're gonna overlay it. And set it to like 35 for opacity. So it just cools it off just a little bit. So that is how I achieved our still singular image of the black hole. So let's now turn these into 3D layers. So for right now, I'm just gonna turn off those adjustments I made. Turn all of these layers into 3D layers by clicking this this box here, 
and we need to make a new camera. We're gonna set it to 24 millimeter. Bring the size of our comp down because we're making this a video clip now. So we're gonna make it 1920 by 1080. 24 frames a second. And you see how much zoomed in it is now, but that's okay. We have our elements here and what we need to do is decide where in Z space we want everything. So first, we're gonna change our view to two views. So we have our view from the top and then our actual camera view. I'm just gonna set a keyframe for everything here. And I'm gonna to go to the very end and set a keyframe because I'm gonna be doing some changes here and make camera moves. So it's just, that's kind of what I do. I always just set my, my keyframes right to start out with. Okay, so our point of interest. So right here, that's our Z space. And you see it moved a little bit there. We want to have this nice, pretty far back in Z space. Now let's turn it back onto our active camera. And let's scale everything down for right now. So it fits in our comp. And then we're going to, we'll then rework everything. So hit S for scale. We want to get it as far zoomed out as we can without it losing anything on the corners. So that looks good at 41. Okay. Now let's take our star field and move it back in Z space because these stars are thousands of light years away. And if we don't know where it is, we can hit our camera so we can figure out where we need to take it to. Okay, so that works. So let's turn our regular active camera back on. You see how much smaller that got? So let's now scale it back up so it fits just barely in there because we're not gonna be pulling out any more than this. We're gonna be zooming in. So everything else is gonna be roughly in this area here, this, this box. Everything else is gonna exist kind of here and these stars are all the way back there. So figure out what, what we want to exist on the same plane. So I think we want the center core, the bridge, the planet blur, all to exist on the same plane. Actually, we're gonna leave that the same because that's right in the center and that's kind of our, our center core. So we'll leave all that, those guys the same. And then let's do our top rings and bottom rings. And I want these a little further away. So we're gonna pull it maybe to like right there. So let's go back to our active camera. Our atmosphere is gonna stay the same. Let's do our center ring. Remember, I, I thought this stuff, this was a little too sharp. So let's throw a fast blur on it. Just make it like seven. And this is gonna be this extra little center ring element. We're gonna move it up just a little bit. And as well as the center ring particles. But these are gonna vary a little bit. They're not gonna be just the same. You have that like right here. And maybe let's pull up that other element just a little further. And then for our extra particles here, this is the one we really want to bring towards the camera in Z space. So I'm talking like, yeah, like right like that. I think it even can maybe come up a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think our top and bottom rings need to be further back actually. And let's check these out and then we're gonna scale it back up so it'll match. So there they are. And now what we're gonna do is add a camera move to this. Zoom in going towards the black hole. So open up our camera settings. We're gonna go to the very end and we're gonna hit C, for, this is our camera tool. Hit it again until we get this icon right here. And let's, and let's play this back and see what it looks like just by doing a nice, just simple push in. So you can even see that there's some separation here with those particles. And what we can do here is we're gonna add another universe filter. We're gonna use, we're gonna go to distort ripples. What I did here was I kind of just added a little bit of extra movement where I had, where I increased the frequency and the phase of the ripples. 
And I just threw this on really quick, so I'm sure with some fine tuning, we can make it look even better. It looks like kind of the black hole sucking those back in. So that looks pretty cool. If you were happy with this, you would render it out, export it, bring it back in, then do your adjustment layers. Because this will take a lot longer to render with all of these layers enabled. That's looking pretty good. A lot more energy. And I, I'll, what I'll probably do later is maybe go grab your core center layer and throw kind of another animation preset on it. So it has a little bit of variation and glow and looks like it's kind of pulsating. So I would add a lot of those elements into it. So that was quite a in-depth walkthrough on how I created this shot. I'm pretty satisfied with what we were able to accomplish here. If you guys haven't seen the quick version of this video, you guys should check it out. Please uh, shoot us any, any suggestions, comments, thoughts, opinions, suggestions. We'd love to hear it all. So thanks a lot, guys. And we'll see you around cyberspace and hope to see some uh, really cool looking nebula, black hole visual effects out there. And thanks to Red Giant for having me do this tutorial. It was quite an honor. And I've been using their filters ever since I got my Panasonic DVX 100B way back in 05. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to our web series, Shanks Effects, on YouTube. And go see Interstellar.